I want to tell you this story. When we were hit and uh, we were flying tail end Charlie in the V formation, we were flying tail end Charlie, which is low and, and back in the middle of the, the V. And we had P-47 escorts from the border of Germany to over Hanover. And then they had to peel off because they were uh, short on fuel, had to go back. So I called up to, on the intercom to the pilot and told him that uh, our, our fighter escort was peeling off. And he said, uh, Roger, he said, we're supposed to pick up P-51s here and somebody, everybody keep an eye out and call me the first one that sights our aircraft. Just momentarily after that, I don't know who it was, but one of the crew members called up and said, boy, there's our, there's our escort at 12 o'clock high. Ain't that pretty? They were ME-109s. At a distance, the ME-09 resembles the P-51 to a slight extent. So this is, and they were flying formation. This is the first time we'd ever seen them do that. Well, they peeled off and started firing at us, and the first one they hit was us, number two engine, set it on fire. We had to fall out of formation, the full bomb load and everything else. <clears throat> then when you fall out of formation, they just keep coming in. And they shot us again and shot the tail and the radio and the nose and two engines. So the, so the pilot gave the order to bail out. And the navigator from the nose of the ship called up and said, uh, Mac, we can't, we, me and John, who was a bombardier, said, we can't bail out. We, our parachutes are spilled. 20 millimeters hit it. We don't, have, we don't have any parachutes. We can't bail out. So he ordered, he ordered the crew to stand by and acknowledge, and everybody rogered the radio and roger waste gunners and so forth, but tail gunner didn't come in. So I heard him say to the co-pilot, let's see what we can do with this thing, and I won't use the words that he said, but we'll see what we can do. So just a moment later, the co-pilot got on the intercom and talked to the pilot and said, Mac, we're going to crash and kill us all. So he ordered ordered the crew to bail out, the navigator to come up and take his chute, and for the bombardier to take the spare chute, and for the crew to bail out. Well, he protested, but he told him who was in charge of that ship, and he was to obey the order. So that's what we did. <clears throat> when we started to bail out, uh, the tail gunner had been hit in the hand, and he, in his dilemma, he came up in the waist of the ship and had passed out. So he was laying there, and when, the, when we started to bail out, well, the two waste gunners put a mask on him and got him back in breathing and put a static on and pushed him out. So I started to leave. I passed, had to go out. I would go out to Bombay, but it was closed. So I went over to the uh, waste and started to go out. As I passed the ball turret, I noticed it was jammed, and he couldn't get out. So the engineer and I cranked it up, and he got out and bailed out. <clears throat> then I bailed out, and floated down to earth. I'll tell you something else. After we all bailed out, the pilot crash landed the ship and lived. He hit a, hit a little swampy area, brought her in, and he lived. <clears throat> now the co-pilot and the bombardier didn't make it. We don't know what happened to them. Well, I was captured by the Germans as soon as I hit the ground. But a uh, little bit of story before I get to that. <clears throat> we go down and to the supply and draw our, draw our equipment for the mission, you know, and get our parachutes and everything. Why, well, one of those smart Alex would supply sergeants say, now if this thing don't work to suit you, you bring it back and we'll make you, we'll give you a new one or make it right with you. When I pulled my rep cord and felt that little pilot chute come out that was going to pull out my main shroud, I thought, by golly, it's going to work and I'll have to take it back. <laughs> so when I hit the ground, I, I began to, a lot of blood coming out of my legs and arms, and I hit the ground a small tree, and he bent over and let me down pretty easy. And in my dilemma, I was supposed to get your parachute out and hide it the very first thing. And in my dilemma, uh, <clears throat> I looked around and there were six German soldiers coming down through the field with uh, rifles in a ready position. And I thought, well, what in the world am I going to do? I can't run. If I do, they'll just shoot me. So I couldn't do anything. But <clears throat> I couldn't walk anyway, so 13 months and 18 days, a few hours. <laughs>